It's Barbecue Nation with JT on a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend. Now here's JT. Hey everybody, welcome to the nation. That's the Barbecue Nation. I'm JT along with my producer, Dr. Dave, high atop the radio world in Portland, Oregon. And we want to welcome all of our affiliates on the Radio Northwest Network and the ones in Texas. Thanks for being with us and letting us into your homes today or your cars or wherever you're listening. Our guest today is uh, coming to us all the way from southeast Georgia. I stumbled across Ben Lang and his uh, barbecues, smokers, thanks to Kel Phelps, who was on the show last week. Now, I must say I've probably seen your smokers, but I've never you know, physically been around them. But first, let me be proper and welcome you to the show. Well, thank you very much, JT. It's a pleasure to be with you guys. No worries. So give us a little history, Ben, on Lang Barbecue Smokers, uh, uh, you know, going back 1988 or even further back, how you got into this crazy world. Well, um, probably started with Grandpa. He ran the smokehouse back in the day and uh, sold his uh, meat, um, uh, smoked bacons and ham from uh, horse-drawn, mule-drawn wagons, him and my father. And uh, along the way, uh, Dad uh, and some cousins and brothers cobbled up a cooker for use at uh, family um, gatherings and weddings and such, cooking hogs, things like that, and kind of come up with what they thought was the best of all all apparatuses, kind of a, uh, you know, a, um, a mixture of a little bit of everything. And, and uh, I, I saw the cooker in action and found out how good a, cooker it was in terms of the way the food cooked in it and decided to build a product line out of it standardize all the parts and components and build a product line out of it and a brand and uh knowing full well that i could build it as i say goof proof um where you'd have uh yeah uh, a guy that's never cooked barbecue get a hold of this cooker take some simple instruction look at a video or two read through the user guide and fire that bad boy up, and his friends and uh, colleagues think he's reinvented fire in terms of cooking, uh, the way the food just pops coming off the cooker. And the primary reason is because it uh, sizzles and sears the meat to perfection. But, um, you know, I guess it all started with Grandpa and Daddy peddling that stuff out of the wagon, talking and chewing the fat along the way. Sure. Um, you know, little little did uh, they know that it would turn into something that thousands of people would use a product and uh, serve their needs, cooking and, you know, winning friends and influencing people cooking <laughs> with the food. Did did you have uh, any engineering training or was this OJT type uh, stuff? No, no, no. It's, uh, it's a little more than that. My background was sales and marketing primarily, but I uh, had the engineering and, and mechanical aptitude to the ability to be able to build and do anything mm -hmm. so um you know putting those uh, things together after having the uh, the marketing and the sales skills honed um set out to build a uh, trademark brand name product that'd be recognized worldwide sure and by by god's good grace that's what we got um it's uh it's it's uh, not often that you you talk and you end up looking or seeing a Lang barbecue smoker or hearing about one pretty quickly. Um, you know, the, the, the use of them on, on television episodes and things and reruns is uh, to this day astonishing how, how well they're received. <laughs> did the original one that your granddad and, and father put together, did it have the, you know, the offset firebox or was it, did you have to well, change the original it was, design? It was dad, dad and my brothers and cousins that, that cobbled up the first one, but the, it always had an offset firebox and a baffle plate that made the heat reverse its flow. Mm -hmm. And and that's the nickname it took took along the way, reverse flow. And you know, people started paying notice and, and emulating what or imitating what we were doing. Sure, but uh, the when it, when I set out to build a product line, I looked at it in terms of engineering it so it couldn't fall apart overbuilding it or building it like it's like a cast iron skillet all welded it couldn't couldn't do anything but sizzle and sear meat mm -hmm. and and fix it so it would run proper and be easy to clean up it should be a no-brainer and it it is that's the way the thing cooks it uh it just sizzles and sears meat but i set out to build a griddle in ours 
uh, when we started with the cookers um, in production. The griddle was, was to allow the fat to render onto it and the grease to drain off of it. And we found out along the way that when you let fat render naturally, as it's seasoned fat at that, render on a clean griddle, hot griddle, you got moisture and flavor beyond compare. Chefs seek it. It is the, it is the the deal. It really is that fat rendering on a griddle is magic. And um, as long as you hose it out while it's hot and knock the grease out of it, so that next time you bust it off and cook it, season fat again. Nothing rancid. Always seasoned cooker, but nothing rancid from last cook. And people pay notice to it. It's like they get ruined. They don't want food <laughs> cooked any other way. I can it believe that, be, yeah. Well, what happens is is the food's leaner and cleaner tasting than anything you ever got a hold of. And the first time you, you eat a morsel of food off the cooker, it throws you back because it's like, wow, this is moisture that I've ever had before. Because it's not mimic moisture, or some, some condensation-created thing. Right. It's real, real fat rendering, and that's where the magic is. Um, we've all eaten barbecue that's all filler, no flavor and stopped eating it and don't want it anymore. And that's why chains, big-time restaurant chain, barbecue restaurant chain, still seek, um, you know, the uh, the holy grail of barbecue, trying to find the next best thing. And, and uh, you know, whether it's an electric contraption or a pellet this or that or whatever it might be, they're, they're seeking it. And really, all they're, they're doing is find out they need to get back to authentic, let each barbecue joint cook its own stuff to these guidelines, quit trying to supply it through commissaries, et cetera, et cetera. And they're finding out that that's where the magic is, getting back to authentic. That's how you reinvent yourself. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of restaurants. Now, I, I don't know if they've used your products, Lang's, or they've. I know some of them have built their own, but it's, oh, the, yeah. it's the same theory. You know, it, it's not too hard to, to take pictures or be around your product and get ideas and people go and build their own on a – uh, you know, much larger or smaller or whatever they're looking for. It's, everybody's different, but I have seen a lot of those. And, uh, but I've never heard uh, anybody talk about the fat rendering like that. We're cooking on a land. 